You know, it's a good thing we're talking about science today because the other day I was reading a book about helium and I couldn't put it down because it's helium. Hey, I'm Emma. At 240, we help teachers pass their certification exams. And today, we're gonna help you. This video is going to prepare you for subtest one of the Mega Elementary Education Multi-Content Exam. Mega stands for Missouri Educator Gateway Assessment, and it's test code 073. Now, the Mega Elementary Education Multi-Content Exam is split into two subtests. Subtest one covers mathematics and science. Subtest two includes English language arts and social studies. Each contains approximately 80 multiple choice questions. But in this video, we're only gonna talk about subtest one. And we're gonna cover three things. What's on the test and how to study for it, the most likely concepts that will be on the test, and we're gonna look at a few practice questions. Let's get to it. Again, the Mega Elementary Education Multi-Content Exam subtest one is made of two domains, mathematics and science. The questions are split up fairly evenly between the two domains with about 55% of the questions focusing on math and 45% of the questions on science. Each of these two domains are made up of a few competencies that provide more information about the questions you'll be asked. But let's be real, reading through these competencies can give you a headache. We just need to know the most important things and how they're gonna be tested. But that's exactly why I'm here. I wanna point out the highlights and make this as easy as possible for you. So buckle up, because we're gonna go over a key concept from each competency. Let's start with the first domain, mathematics. The first competency is number sense and operations. An essential concept to know for this competency is converting between fractions, decimals, and percentages. Let's take a closer look. On your test, you'll likely be given a value, for example, 6%. Then you'll be asked to convert that number into a fraction or decimal. Our study guide gives you helpful flowcharts like this one to help you solve the problem. In this case, we'll start with the 6% and follow the arrow to the fraction box. This tells us that to go from a percent to a fraction, we need to put the number over 100, remove the percent sign, and simplify. So 6% over 100 becomes 3 over 50, meaning 6% is equal to 3 fiftieths. Want some more practice? Check out our study guide. It has everything you need to pass the test. Let's look at the next competency. Competency two is relationships and algebra. You'll need to be comfortable solving for variables and modeling real world situations. Right now, let's look at taking a verbal description and translating it into an algebraic expression. Basically, you'll wanna be able to read a word problem and match up all of the important information either with a number, variable, or operation. Here's a snippet of one of the tables included in our study material that's a useful translation guide. So if you see the words increase by in a word problem, it's probably talking about addition. If you see deduct, you'll probably use subtraction in your expression. When we pick variables for our expressions, we usually just use the first letter of the real world meaning. For example, four dogs could be represented by 4D. Let's look at an example that will put this into practice. Maria baked six dozen cookies for her classmates. There are 28 students in her class and each child received two cookies. Maria gave six cookies each to her teacher and her principal. Let's write an expression that represents this situation. Six times 12 gives us the total number of cookies in six dozen, which is how many cookies Maria baked. Then we need to determine how many cookies she gave away. If each of her classmates receives two cookies and there are 28 children, two times 28 will be the number of cookies that the children get. We need to subtract this from the total. If the teacher and principal each receive six, that's another six times two. These will have to be subtracted from the total too. Since both of these quantities are being subtracted, we can put them in parentheses and move the minus sign outside of the parentheses. So we have six times 12 minus the quantity of two times 28, add it to two times six. Great job. Let's move on to the next competency. The third competency in domain one is geometry and measurement. Let's look a little closer at finding the area of a polygon. In our study guides, you'll find helpful tables like this one. You'll want to be very familiar with all of these perimeter and area formulas. You never know which shape you'll see on your test. Our study guides also include videos. Loretto does a great job explaining how to find the area of complicated shapes. Sometimes polygons have non-standard shapes. In this case, a formula alone will not work and the polygon must be divided into multiple simpler shapes. The areas are then added together to find the total area. Let's see how this works. 
Find the area of the figure below. There is no standard formula to determine the area of this shape, but decomposing the figure into two common shapes makes the math easy. There is a bottom rectangle of dimensions 6 cm by 4 cm. On top, there is a triangle with a base of 6 cm and a height of 2 cm. The area of this figure is the sum of the two parts. First, we solve for the area of the bottom rectangle. The area of a rectangle equals length times width, so 6 times 4, which equals 24 cm squared. Next, we solve for the area of the top triangle. The area of a triangle equals 1 half times the base of the triangle times the height of the triangle. So 1 half times 6 times 2, which is 6 cm squared. Now we add the values together to solve for the total area. 24 cm squared plus 6 cm squared gives us a total area of the shape of 30 cm squared. So remember, to find the area of an irregular shape, break the shape into smaller common shapes. Knowing the formulas for common shapes can help you find missing information about irregular shapes. The figure below is made from five squares of equal size. If the perimeter of the figure is 36 inches, what is the area of the figure? First, sketch in the five squares composing the figure. In this case, the perimeter of the figure is made up of 12 sides of the squares as shown. Therefore, the side length of each square can be found by taking the total perimeter and dividing it by the number of sides that make up the perimeter of the shape. So, 36 divided by 12 gives us a side length of 3 inches per side. Need more of a refresh on area? We've got it all for you in the 240 study guide. Are you ready for the last math competency? This competency is about data, statistics, and probability. Probability has a very high probability of being on your exam, so let's take a closer look. Probability is the likelihood of an event occurring. It equals the number of possible successful outcomes divided by the total number of possible outcomes. Think about trying to roll a five on a six-sided die. There's only one way to have a successful outcome, rolling a five. But there are six possible outcomes. So the probability of rolling a 5 is 1 out of 6, or 1 sixth. All probabilities fall in between 0 and 1. 0 means the outcome you're looking at is impossible, and 1 means it's certain. So a probability of 1 sixth is pretty low. Let's try an example. Without looking, Jesse draws a marble from the bag shown, replaces it, gives the bag a good shake, and draws again. What is the probability that Jesse drew a red marble both times? It looks like there are 10 total marbles in this bag, and three of them are red. So on the first draw, the probability of drawing a red marble is three out of 10. Since the marble is replaced, the probability of drawing a red marble on the second draw is still three out of 10. So the probability of drawing red on both draws is 3 tenths times 3 tenths, or nine out of 100. We can divide to get 0 0.09 or 9%. If you feel like you need more practice with probability or any of the other statistics topics, we have them ready for you in our study guide. Click the link below to get started. Nice, you made it through all the math competencies. Are you ready for science? The science portion of this exam is broken down into three major science categories, physical, life, and earth and space. Let's take it from the top with physical science. Hold up, is it warm in here or what? Just kidding, I wanted an excuse to talk about heat transfer. Heat transfers through conduction, convection, and radiation. Let's think about boiling water on a stove. Conduction happens when thermal energy, or heat, is transferred through two materials that are touching. Think about touching a pan with a metal handle. Even though the handle wasn't touching the burner directly, the heat transferred through the hot pan and made the handle hot. Convection happens when heat moves through a fluid, like water or air. Here, the water at the bottom of the pan heats up, then rises to the surface as it becomes less dense. Radiation happens when heat is transferred by an electromagnetic wave. This is why you might feel the heat from the burner on your hand, even though you aren't touching it. Man, we're really cooking now. Let's look at the next science competency. Competency six covers life science. This is another competency with a lot of information. For right now, Let's look at traits a little closer. 
Traits are passed down to offspring via these alleles for the genes on chromosomes. These chromosomes come from gametes made by the parents. In simple genetics, traits can either be dominant or recessive. If the dominant allele is present, the organism will show the dominant trait. In order for the recessive trait to show up, the organism must have only recessive alleles for that specific trait. Dominant alleles are usually represented by a capital letter, and recessive alleles are represented by the same letter in lowercase. Watch out for this very common misconception. Dominance only means that the trait will show up if it is present in the DNA. Dominant traits are not always better, nor are they more common. Don't you just love studying with videos? Me too. We have plenty more on all sorts of topics in the study guide. Hey, we've made it to our last competency. This last competency covers Earth and space science. So, you know, just everything about how our entire planet works. Oh, and the whole solar system too. No big deal, right? Let's just look at one thing for now. Let's take a look at an important part of the solar system, the moon. For these questions, you'll want to make sure you know why the moon appears differently across the 28-day cycle. Here's another image from the 240 guide. Notice that as the relative positions of the Earth, Sun, and Moon change, so does how the Moon appears to people on Earth. There are four main phases that are each about a week apart. New Moon, First Quarter, Full Moon, and Third Quarter. In between those main phases, the Moon is either waxing or waning. You'll want to make sure that if you're given a diagram, you'll be able to figure out which phase the Moon is in. A great way to see if you're ready for these questions is if you can confidently sketch the whole cycle from memory. You're doing great. Don't worry, we're almost to the finish line. We'll have some practice with this in just a minute because it's question time. Let's start back at the beginning with domain one, math. And let's take a look at a question about number sense. Remember when we talked about percents, decimals, and fractions? Let's practice another question. The state sales tax is 7.5%. Which number could also represent 7.5%? Because our answer options are both decimals and fractions, we can convert 7.5% into both. To convert the percent into a decimal, we need to divide by 100, which results in 0.075. This doesn't match either of our decimal answers, so we can eliminate options A and D. To convert a percent to a fraction, just put the percent over 100 and simplify. This gives us a reduced fraction of 3 fortieths, so option B is correct. There are a lot of topics within the relationships and algebra competency. We looked at translating a verbal expression to a symbolic expression earlier, but let's switch it up a bit and try an example problem where we solve for a variable. 2a minus 12 plus a equals 18, and we need to solve for a. So we combine like terms before performing inverse operations to get a by itself, and that leaves us with a equals 10. So b is the correct answer. Now for the next one, let's check out a perimeter problem. We're told the west wall of a square room has a length of 13 feet, and they want the perimeter of the entire room. Well, squares have four sides of equal measure. So the perimeter, the area around the figure, would be four times 13, which is 52. A is the correct answer. The circle graph shows the results of a survey of 150 students. How many students chose basketball as their favorite sport? This problem gives us survey data, a pie chart, and asks how many students chose basketball as their favorite sport. Since 150 students were asked, we need to multiply the percentage by that total. So 8% times 150. 8% times 150 gives us a total of 12 students. Option C is correct. That's a wrap on domain one. On to domain two, science. Earlier, we looked at types of energy transfer, Let's see how that would look in question form. As a demonstration during a unit on heat transfer, a teacher heats one end of a long metal rod and later measures the temperature at different positions along the rod. Which of the following processes is demonstrated by the range of temperatures? Conduction is a method of heat transfer that happens when the kinetic energy of molecules is transferred to other molecules in the substance. In this demonstration, the parts of the rod that are not over the heat source are heated by convection. Let's head over to life science and take a look at a Punnett square example. Consider the following Punnett square. If capital A is dominant over lowercase a, what percentage of the offspring would be expected to show the dominant phenotype? 
any organism that contains a dominant gene will show the dominant trait. Two of the four boxes here contain a dominant gene, the capital A. So 50% of offspring would be expected to show the dominant phenotype. Last question. We're revisiting the phases of the moon. Which of the following moon phases occurs within the next four nights following a new moon? A new moon occurs when the moon is on the same side of the Earth as the sun. After a new moon, a small sliver of the bright side of the moon is visible on Earth. This sliver grows into a crescent moon within three and a half days. An increase in the size of the bright side is called waxing. So this answer is best. And that's it. We've practiced a question from every competency in the Mega Elementary Education Subtest 1. Congratulations on finishing the video. If you found it helpful, give it a like. There's still plenty more to learn though. If you really wanna make sure you're prepared for the Mega Elementary Education Subtest 1, take the next step and subscribe to the 240 Study Guide. It has hours of videos so you can watch or listen even while doing chores. It's test aligned so you know precisely what you need to study. And it has hundreds of practice questions so you can be sure you're ready. And best of all, it has the money back guarantee. So click the link below right now to get started.